stay in tune, horrors, and welcome back to another episode of Rogue Tech. As we get into the campaigns of Howl's Heroes, we're coming to the end of our campaigns with Howl's Heroes. Uh, I'm not quite sure how many more weeks is going to be until we actually switch on over. So I've been sort of accelerating things as fast as I can to get some of the cooler mechs that I wanted to field out. So we're going to be taking a recovery mission today, three skulls. It's the highest level of recovery. There's a five skull today, but it's not quite sure. Well, not today, but... Not quite sure that'll be fielded today. Uh, 132,800 sea bills seems a bit light, but uh, this is basically our weapons test for today. We have quite a bit of heavy firepower that we want to push down. This may not have been the best map in order to field this on, but hey, we're going to give it the best chance that it has. So corporate secrets going to show up. We're going to destroy as well. We're going to steal all of the stuff back. I think there's a shopping center here. All right, so we have the king crack. It is here. But first, we're going to go through everybody else. Actually, if I can remember who's actually driving the King Crack, it is Death Crusade. Okay. So, Finn is driving the Vulture with his twin arrows. Howl is rocking the Thanatos. She would drive the King Crack, but she's not a Gunnery 10, which will be important later. Jester is in the Emperor with his indirect thumpers and swarm missiles. Mockingbird is in the Mackey. Paradox is driving the Onager, as well as backed up by Coach in the Catapult. Showboat is finally rocking the Black Knight. Uh, I'm not sure if this 588 damage is the final actual damage value. We've seen it be a little bit odd before. It is equipped with one, two, three, four, five, six ER medium lasers and a whole bunch of gear designed purposely in order to make it the most deadly close range combat death machine ever. Dual wielding hatchets. Unfortunately, they don't actually show up on the model, but he's got a, hat a hatchet in one hand that does like 90 damage and a hatchet in the other hand that does like 65 damage and it is hilarious. So hopefully this will be able to actually get up in on top of the enemy and cause mass maximum havoc. Death Crusade driveth the King Rack. And it is equipped with four rotary AC5s. Yup. We're going to see if this amount of ammunition can hold out. Remember how I was saying a couple of episodes ago, uh, we need to find AC5 ammo? This was why. 190 rounds, six or four guns firing at six rounds. That's 24 shells per round. Hopefully this thing is going to be absolutely devastatingly powerful, and it is hopefully the most powerful mech I've ever built. We're going to find out. So, uh, Coach is run. up first, and we're going to start running him on forward. We want to get towards the enemy locations. I don't quite know how fast King Crack is going to end up actually being, because of, you know, the various things about the fact that it's a 100-ton mech, and I believe it has a 300 rated fusion core. Might be a little bit slow. Come we'll here. find out in the very near future. Although we are currently being helped on along a little bit by the fact that we're currently... Oh, did you identify us? Okay. By the fact that we're currently operating on roads. I'm going to drop a shell down in here. May as well. Get a little bit of pain on towards the enemy, causing a little damage, scatter all over the place. Death Crusade, moving quite high on the initiative for what he's at. He's 19. Let's see how fast this thing moves. Yeah, I kind of figured that'd be the case. <laughs> Not exactly quick, but I knew that was going to be the case. Uh, hopefully, though, it will more than make up for that in firepower. Uh, the Vulture is going to shift on forward, looking to get a little bit more of a high ground angle. And we'll lay a pair of arrows down just sort of around the place. The lob up a couple of arrows to see if the enemy can't be brought out of their shell. Which, with any luck, they will. Or they may not actually be, even be there. I mean, that's entirely possible as well. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a supercharger, but I do have Endo TSM. So, hopefully I can heat this mech up enough in order to activate the end. So, for those of you who don't know, Endo TSM requires you to have a certain amount of heat before it'll actually turn on. And I'm going to see if I can't generate that heat now. And once you, you know, turn on the Endo TSM, it increases your walking, your running, and your damage that you can deal to somebody. So it's a really good idea to get your Endo TSM active as fast as you possibly can, because it'll allow you to get on top of the enemy sooner and allow you to beat the ever living crap out of the enemy sooner as well. Combine that with something like Berserker for the additional 50% damage bonus, and you might have an absolutely devastating combination that I'm kind of hoping that we can pull off. Mackie on forward. I uh, should have actually turned all of my amuses to overload, but I only turned the one on. So, shell going out. We're going to see if we can't find the enemy. We're bringing down some of the house, though. Thanks so, there is that. Good. Oh, good. We, we're going to have an opportunity to set all of my amuses to overload, just in case. You never know what's going to come your way. The uh, There is even an AMS on the Black Knight. So that'll provide a little bit more close-in protection, as we found was very important when we were using the Axeman. The Axeman, by the way, has not gone anywhere. It's still sitting in the hold. Uh, well, it's still sitting in an active duty roster, so it can be used at any moment. I copy. Do you see anything from up here? You don't. I'm just going to hold you. 
There is an enemy on the map, somewhere. We don't know where, but we're gonna find out. Hopefully I can bring King Crack to bear on him because I want to cause just the most amount of carnage possible. So you're gonna rush on forward with your advanced risk sensors. You know what, I'll even go, I'll be aggressive about it. Right through the middle, okay, we have a couple of VTOLs and a Bombard. Oh, it's a dangerous Bombard too, so we're gonna just lay into him with all the Hydra. We're gonna light him on all the fire, so you can't just get things started in there. If we max out his temperature, I might not have to fight him at all. So, from here, what do you see? Nightshade and a yellow jacket with a plasma cannon. And an enhanced LRM carrier. Ooh, that's a little bit more dangerous. The Bombard, of course, something we want, do want to light on fire. However, I'm going to focus on the LRM carrier. I'm going to give him a little bit of Inferno as well as a standard round. Probably should have gone both Infernos, but... I wanted to be a little bit stingy with the ammunition. I only have so much, so it becomes a little bit important. You're going to continue your walk off to the side. We'll probably take on this nice little location over here as our firebase. Although, I'm not sure you can get up there. Honigar will rush in as well. We'll just get him as close as possible. And he's also going to go for the Bombard. Absolutely. We're going to see if I can't light him on all of the fire without ever actually having to see him. So enjoy more Hydras. It's like Swarm. Wouldn't be better. And Death Crusade. Once again, high rolls out of this. Just going to rush him on in. Next turn, he'll be able to actually see something. You know what? I'm just going to preemptively set all of the guns to maximum. I really just want to give have an opportunity where he just gets to unload every single one of those into the same target. I'm so looking forward to it. You have no idea. I have been sitting on King Crack for so long, not telling anybody about it, what it could do, or the amount of damage that it could potentially wreak. Because it has a thousand something damage currently built into it. Because uh, it's 45 times 6, I believe it's 270. And then times that by 4, you, uh, maybe not. Maybe not quite that high. So, as we prepare, Howl is going to move on in. Driving the Thanatos, not her normal ride, obviously. She uh, tends to prefer something a little bit more direct aggressive. And I would have put her in King Crack. Unfortunately, she doesn't have the 10 gunnery that's going to be needed to actually handle all of that, you know, control. Let's see the task for yeah, the King Crack can deal 1,080 damage in one round of shooting. Shoot at everything, like the stars align and the like. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna shoot at the hand cell arm carrier. We're just gonna lay a shell right on down on top of you. Enjoy the high explosives. Doesn't look like we hit it. Yeah, we apparently impacted up on the hill slightly above. I hear ya. All right, Jailboat, your endo TSM is on. Look at how fast it moves with endo TSM. And we have so many convenient fast. buildings to shoot at to keep the temperature nice and high. Yeah, it's triple. And it doesn't even really matter that we're bringing down the house. That's not, I don't care about that. I only care about keeping the endo TSM or rolling at maximum uh, temperatures because if I keep that endo TSM rolling, well, you're seeing what happens, how fast she can move, how aggressive she can be. Although I'll probably end up trying to steal the bombard. <laughs> like, it's kind of the flip side of that. I'm not actually looking to chop anybody up. And it looks like the enhanced LRM carrier drove through fire and exploded. Yeah, that's what happens when vehicles drive through fire. It's not particularly safe for them. I can't hit the bombard. Do I have sw I think I- yes, I have hydras. So let's light the- light him on even more of the- oh! Whoops. Okay, didn't quite mean that. Solid connection on that one. I forgot to shut off his cannons. <laughs> And this is why the Emperor is a little bit more powerful than might otherwise be obvious. Like, we accidentally murdered him. We didn't even mean to do it. It was just, whoops, my hand slipped. And, you know, we laid into him. If I was actually trying to, you know, completely butcher him, I would have set over, changed over to shape charges. Because the shape charge would have gone right through him and probably annihilated the entire mech. Yeah, I wanted to actually take that bumper intact. I mean, it's not great, but it's, um, oh, it's still intact. Okay, whoo. I mean, it's not much intact. I'm going to have to be very careful on how much I continue to light it on fire, but, well, there's, there's an opportunity to make this still work. This is, what, a 50, 55-ton mech? A 50-ton mech, I think? And it's got two AC-20s on board. It's craziness. Oh, good, he's showing me his left side. I can work with that. Shut down? Nah, not going to be that lucky. Coach, turn him off. So let's just go turn him and deactivate him. I got you. Hiya, buddy. Uh, I'm going to switch over to Inferno SRMs. 
because it's what you deserve. And we're luckily on the side where we can't hit that arm that is incredibly damaged. So, do all the misses. It's a light smattering of... And he's out. He is... Wants no business in that anymore. Just too much for him. Simply can't handle it. Hopefully one of these yellow jackets will move into a range where King Crack can do something. I might not be able to punch anybody with uh, showboats in the Black Knight, but I would... Actually, what's her damage at right now? Waiting on you, Commander. 823. <laughs> That's just gorgeous. And I love every part of that. What can I do for you? Bring up the Onager. <laughs> oh, somebody behind us. Oh, wow, you, you moved incredibly quickly. Holy crap. Uh, yeah, Onager over here. I can't shoot you. Because I'm not designed for that. What's up, boss? The Thanatos can, if the Thanatos gets a line of sight. Of course, the Thanatos getting a line of sight is probably not going to happen. I can do, however. Roger. Is I can lay a shell right on top of where you're supposed to be. And that'll hopefully get us the results that we want. Roger that. She's damaging you without, you know, doing too much to anything else. Uh, Showboat. Yes, you're, you're just gonna sort of run into the general area because we've got to get around this, but I think you'll probably knock out the building. I could take a pot shot at the flying target. That is an uh -huh. option. But I want to go through the building. Now the reason I want to go through the building is because that'll save me, you know, an entire turn of travel. Oh, do I not see the building? Apparently not. I turned too much. Okay, in that case, uh, triple. Uh -huh. Hey, we hit him. Got him once. All right, Death yeah. Crusade. Can you get in a line of sight? Just, just anywhere? No? Okay. In that case, Death Crusade will knock on the building. It's not the most gorgeous test of the guns, but... That is... 1,080 damage. <laughs> <laughs> to cook. I didn't pay attention to that, but yeah, he cooks Wait, basically instantaneously. <laughs> uh, give me a direct line of sight on that VTOL, please. I'd like to knock him out of sky. I will destroy him in all of his things. Full speed, no and we'll attack ground. Right underneath him. Hopefully get lucky. Oh, whoops. Should have turned that off because I don't want to be wasting my fire. Literally, heavy Waiting fire. Uh, the Vulture, on the other hand, can really probably pick somebody off. Let's go with Guideds, because they're pretty decent accuracy. We'll have to turn, of course, on you. Although, actually, I may not need Guideds. Yeah, we don't need Guideds. We'll go Standards. Copy that. And landing nearby, flattening half of a base. You. And, yeah, this is a dead end. Huh, who'd have thunk it? Uh, yeah, you can run like that. And the reason why you're going to run like this is because this VTOL has more room around him that I don't need to worry about shooting my own people with. And there goes the building. Reporting. Serious armor loss. I'm wondering what sort of um, corporate se secrets we are attempting to steal back. Okay, you're rising yourself. Are you keeping to travel? Because that's going to be... Oh, she's shooting you down. It's going to be annoying. Oh, hit me with a plasma gun. Losing armor left and right here. Shouldn't have been that much damage. Lots of armor. Oh, he must have some kind of tag barrage that I didn't notice. Coach! What are your orders, Skipper? Uh, right, I want you to move directly behind Mr. Uh, Mr. Barrage. Hi, uh, what was it? I don't know how you caused that much of a fire effect, but okay. Um, we're gonna switch over to SRMs. We'll go Infernos, because why not? I got you. And that kills him. Crawler destroyed. Good job. Although, he's not a crawler, he flies. Very quickly, I might add. Looks like the enemy is not going to be able to use, move their VTOL. I can only pray that they come anywhere near the King Crack, so that the King Crack can unload with all of his damage. We got 1,080 damage in a single salvo. Sounds delicious. And I'm looking forward to it. Fingers crossed, it'll all work out. So what are you going to do? Nothing. Okay, I can kind of work with that, actually. Uh, I have Infernos. If I can see you, I can, you know, there you are. Hi! Thank you for standing still. I appreciate it. Saving me a lot of time. 
Okay, dead. Dead and dusted. Have those <laughs> for the racks jammed, but we were kind of expecting that to be completely honest. Let's move. Do they unjam? Did both of them unjam? They both unjam. Now that's kind of the thing that I've calculated okay. is theoretically, hopefully, they will be able to fire every other round, and everything and else is F. you know gravy after that. Yes. Um. Yeah. Let's just catch everybody back up. Get us all together again. So that slide path did not exactly work out with us, but that's okay. No, seriously, how did you manage to cause that much fire effect all around? I didn't see anything that would allow you to do that. Ready for orders. Oh uh, yeah, get the vulture out of that fire. I don't want it burning too crisp. Understood. Moving fast. Temperatures going low. And chill out. Easily able to move into the zone. We'll then turn around. Pole position. Yeah, you're gonna stand on the black knight. It's gonna be fun, trust me. Uh, do you have... I don't. <laughs> Let's see if... Actually, no, we'll go over the line a little bit. A little bit more than a bit. Tell me what to shoot. Because the only only requirement, the only reason those lasers exist is one, to give you more melee damage, and two, to keep your TSM to a good temperature. Alright, that's it. So she didn't actually get a chance to axe anybody. It may actually be a little while before she does. Uh, but as long as we can keep that temperature high, and I think that we can, assuming the right environment, then we can really rip through things. 800 damage with the TSM active. It's gonna be glorious. So the pilot bailed out of holy, a fully intact Bombard. So we can grab all of that. Uh, hand cell arm 20s. Probably grab that. Is this like an area of effect explosive? Uh, deals. It does deal area of effect explosive damage. Interesting. So it's like a plasma super gun. Hmm. That may be worth trying to grab. Uh, a couple of fusion cores, two XL engines. I could sell for a lot of money. Heat sink kit prototype. I have three, so we're actually good on that prototype of heat sinks. We have eleven, so I'm actually good on that as well. Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, we did not get the weapon system we wanted, nor did we get the double heat sinks, but hey, we're gonna get an extra mech that we can basically sell. That's why we took it, and we'll get rid of it, basically, in the space of time before the end of the month. Minimal damage all around to the lance. Uh, we just didn't take all that much, but that's to be expected. That's what we. That's why we're doom dropping three skull missions, because I want to make sure that we take the minimum amount of damage. We are looking at a five skull mission coming up. Uh, probably not this mission, but... The, the Five Skull, I anticipate, will test us in some interesting ways because Five Skull missions are either really, really good or really, really bad, depending on your perspective on things. So, a single day and 79.53 for the repairs. That's not bad at all. Oh, yeah. Everybody's going to be done in a day. I don't have a mech at the moment. Storage. Pull the bombard out of storage. Ready it. There we go. It is, of course, the original bombard. Oh, maybe not. Are you a pirate bombard? Uh, you are a bombard 101. Prepare all. You have a prototype double heat sink kit that you kept intact. That's pretty good. Wow. Um, oh, and a fire control system auto cannon. <laughs> we got a lot of good gear from you. So much good gear. Your XL engine, your internal core, uh, the smallest fusion core you can fit in there. So basically this guy is just a turbo Irby because he has basically the same speed as an urban mech with that 100 degree fusion core. That's hilarious actually. Uh, let's quickly check through the store. We'll be selling the Bombard. We'll be selling the Bombard and the stuff inside the Bombard. That was a great pickup. Uh, ooh, Risk King Crab. I think, our, I think our King Crack is built out of a Risk King Crab. Uh, but it's just the parts to it. Rack 10 double ammo. I need more of this. But three double tons of ammo for that. And you act 20 ammo. Sure, why not? Give me both of them. I'm being a little bit overly aggressive with my money. Ooh, risk ammo ML10. How many do I have? I have none. I need two. Is it worth spending for the one? Kind of. I'll take it. New yeah, 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 I'm being, available. I'm just shoveling money into people. Like, just give me all your stuff. I'll sell all of my other mechs, it'll be fine, don't worry. Weapon mounts somebody got. I have one, I could use more weapon mounts. 
And we're good on all of that. Lovely. And of course, we need a two-day rest for our pilots. That work order you submitted is complete. And there we go. Pilots are nice and happy. Got to check the pilots then. Make sure that none of them are fatigued. Well, not fatigued, but leveling up. Uh, piloting will give us some steadiness. This will give us overheat threshold. Steadiness threshold is always a little bit better because you'll get shelled and missileized, but hey, as long as you keep it rolling, you're fine. Mega, we don't really care about Omega. You're almost to a tactics down. It's pretty cool. So, command center. There is a... Th Ooh, wow, this is not how this looked before. The Before, it was, I saw three missions and I was like, what? And no, I had I had cycled it. Let's go take the bait. 313 against the local pirates. They are not gonna know what hit them. It's gonna be hilarious. And then our cooker group. That's literally why the catapult is still there. Because that's what it does. It lights people on fire. It's hilarious to me. Okay, maybe it shouldn't be, you know, that gleeful. But it is quite fun. And I might get an opportunity to actually, you know, utilize the King Crack to annihilate a target, which is the entire purpose of this entire mech. 1080 damage, just straightforward on it. Now, it took pretty much everything I had to build this mech, but, I mean, come on. Does not have enough ammunition, though, because what it needs is 240 rounds of ammo. Because it can fire 24 guns per round. And unfortunately, in order to get 10 rounds out of that, you need 240 rounds. And I don't think I have that. I think I have 140. Right about 24 is 5.8 turns of shooting. <laughs> That's not good. It best to destroy whatever it's looking at. So I'm going to have to look about changing the ammo on that one because I want this mech to work. It is a very short term mech. Once it's out of ammo, it has nothing else. Although it goes through its ammo incredibly quickly. And if you can kill 5.8 mechs, I mean, that's actually kind of worth it. Hmm. Because that is one quarter of the enemy force, when you stop to think about it. But only if you kill the entire force. Alright, we're going to wrapping into the middle of the forest. So, obviously we will be burning this entire sucker down and, oh god, we got a trip. <laughs> Thanks, Yubi Ray, for dropping me on the literal opposite end of the map. For no reason. Roger, Skipper. Take it See, in Apollo's campaign, she's been dropping him on top of people yeah, left, yeah, right, yeah. and center. It's been great. Roger. But not today. Oh. No siree. Today, we need to slowly frog march our way into battle. Bit by bloody bit. Now, the bright side, what we could just on? start shelling the crap out of people. And you know what? I'm going to do exactly that. Maximum speed. Because I would love to annihilate everything that you believe in. Locking in all weapons. Let's see what it can find. Hey! Sent them into orbit. Oh, we didn't comment. That's not good. Means we didn't hit our target. Confirmed. There was a lot of terrain to cover. A lot of forested terrain. That's going to be the problem. Because forest slows yes, you sir. down, so getting things like the Emperor and King Crack on top of a target is going to take forever. But it is what we must sort of use for keeping our maps awkward and weird. Because the one thing that this mod does is it allows us to... Can I just attack around like this? We tried this in our other campaign. We were having some trouble with it. Yeah, it's... Apparently not going to let me just keep my temperature alight by shooting at the ground. That's really unfortunate, actually. I think it would have been much cooler if I could just continue to blast and burn the ground every single turn to try and turn things on. Are we hitting anything? Mockingbird saith nothing. Interesting. So we don't actually know if we're actually engaging anything. We'll just keep us on the move. Once we get our better orders? superior risk sensors in close, we'll be able to actually pinpoint target things. And then they will stand to no chance at all. Because once you start pinpoint targeting people with lots and lots of artillery, well, life just sort of stops living, doesn't it? For them, anyway. Not really us. Good to go. So it's kind of interesting how these two companies have gone into artillery in completely opposite ways. So in the Apollo's Vipers com uh, company, which is our stream campaign, the artillery that they went into was pretty much all arrow all the time. They shoot anything else. 
mainly because, you know, they only had arrows, and also because arrows that they do get their hands on are all clan arrows, which weigh 12 tons and can do the potential of 100 damage of a guided shell, instead of the 15 tons that Jester is currently hauling around. Honestly, if I was able to get my hands on a couple more tons, on a couple of clan arrows for Jester, I'd probably give him some medium lasers or something. Or more ammo, actually, would probably be really useful. But in Apollo's campaign, he's had all kinds of pick with crazy amounts of arrows. And so he's got one mech that has an MML 30 and two arrows. He's got another mech that is just two arrows, very much similar to our Vulture, although his is on a 55-ton catapult. Then he's got a direwolf, which is equipped... Oh, was it the direwolf? No. Direwolf's equipped with artillery. Yes. Yeah. And then the last arrow equipped mech is equipped with four arrow fours, all on a single stalker, which is sort of outrageous, but also hilariously effective. Whereas with Howl's campaign, they went pretty much almost fully non gun artillery. They have the inverse of what Apollo made, because Apollo has a single twin sniper mech that is a direwolf, which we may end up copying in our. What should we call it? Our Mackie. Not quite the same with the hard points, but the space is there. Let's move. So and so, three arrow mechs and one gun artillery mech versus Howell, who went three gun artillery and a single arrow because of the availability of the types of arrows required in this part of the galaxy. So your geography really does dictate the sorts of builds that you'll end up sort of maneuvering on into. If you have access to a lot of Clan Gauss Rifles, and Clan Gauss Rifles are going to show up in almost all of your builds. And they did in a lot of Apollo's builds. Like, Gauss Rifles were king for a while. Alright, let's actually move Coach, because Coach has better sensors. The risk sensors and the active probes are really good. Unfortunately, no actual line of sight for us on this one. We'll have to back this up with... The sensor tracker on the vulture, still no target. Although we will get a line of sight on you, well not a line of sight, but we will get a sensor track on you eventually, and then you are just screwed. If I can increase my damage by like 300 or something like that, almost, with the end of TSM active, then we're definitely going to have to do that. And it's good that it's ER medium lasers, because that means he'll be able to, well, she'll be able to reach out and shoot people from a much longer distance. And that'll be very effective, I feel. Assuming, of course, you know, we actually get to see the enemy. Which is no guarantee, of course. Honor, rush on, on in there. Still no sensor lock. Commander. We are just sort of going as fast as we can. Where is King Crack? Oh wow, King Crack is actually surprisingly keeping up for the most Thank part with the main company. The Maggie is falling, falling behind, sure, but... A little bit surprising. King Crack is able to continue to move. Aha, we have located the reinforcements. Looks like enemy reinforcements. Those reinforcements are doomed. No, seriously, those reinforcements are so doomed. <laughs> You just you just reveal the Phoenix Arc to me. Confirmed. So let's have the catapult reveal the rest of the enemy. Oh good. What do we got? We got a rapier. I definitely want to turn off a rapier. You are negative, so you're a primitive mech. So yeah, you have a laser AMS. Let's see if I can't get through it. Actually, ooh, a pirate laser AMS would be an amazing pickup. So the rapier. Inferno, Inferno. Ooh, you're starting to get toasty! I get it's only gonna get more toasty from here, friend. A lot more toasty. On the move. You unfortunately do not have any Inferno shells, and your accuracy is not quite up to snuff, so we'll just drop a high explosive. On right on there, doing a decent amount of damage. Nice there job. Enemy phase. And a fire starter. <laughs> the irony is going to be hilarious. And I do hope that you stay for it. Good. Direct line of sight. Show me the rapier. Hi. Hydro's plasma cannons. Goo. Even more heat. Oh, and a knockdown as well. Did I mention I have even more heat? Uh, the cl of course, the Clan Rotary is actually slightly longer range. Could shoot, not going to. Gonna wait for a good shot where I can get every single round on target. Ten four. And you do have an Inferno shell. So, where where's our little... Right in the middle of the group? I see you. More heat. I wonder if that'll actually shut the mech down. 
I also wonder if we'll be able to get enough, you know, vision on it in order to be to able to detect it. Because without the mech online, it becomes a much more difficult prospect to locate and identify. No good shot, unfortunately. So I will attack ground. And I will attack ground on... Ooh, I don't want to because I don't want to kill you. I don't want to kill the the rapier right now because the rapier is carrying a pirate laser AMS, which is the best AMS in the game. Incredibly hot, but it is by bar none the best AMS in game. So I have got to get my hands on that. And the only way to do that is to light him on fire and hopefully blow him apart from the side that does not have the pirate laser AMS, but I don't know which side that is because I don't run into rapiers often enough. I used to run into rapiers eh, semi-regularly. Got a bandit. It's only a hovercraft version though, so it's not all that dangerous to us. So we can work with that. A little bit of incoming on the Onager. Point defense, more than kicking in. Need to set our point defense to overload. Yes, let's not be foolish and get you know, destroyed by our own you know, tactics that we use against the enemy. Quiz with maximum AMS. We have some pretty solid coverage. And the catapult. Using its own integrated laser AMS for the point of defense that it requires. Shooting down and handling most of that problem. So we're dealing with 12 mechs at the moment, which shouldn't be that much of a hard day. Although, if you don't point defense yourself well enough, good job. Keep yourself alive. But don't attempt them. Okay, let's... Everybody's AMS. Maximize the overload. Because it's stupidly important. It'll keep you alive, I swear. Okay, good. Couch. Continue your push in closer, because we need to actually to get a little bit of a uh, sensor data. Copy that, Commander. Good, you've identified the target. No, you've identified a target, it's an urban mech. And it's not what I care about. Hydras are also area of effect munitions. Just gonna zoom on in. There you are. Hi. Enjoy. So we're getting a lot of temperature laid down. One of the reinforcements is already dead, though. We may have already cooked him. I don't know, though. I am going to damage via proxy. There we go. More cooking going. How? Rush your Thanatos on forward. Still don't have enough sensors that I want, unfortunately. Uh, the urban mech has a periphery rifle, which is rather hilarious to me, actually. And an urban mech up there as well. Interesting. Okay, so we might be fighting some urban mechs. I'll drop down on top of this Phoenix Hawk. Quite the arc on that one. Alright, Paradox. Bring the Onager. I need to get even closer to my target locations because, you know, they're they're all sort of here. More Hydra. Don't know if I'm cooking people or not. I don't know what's going on over there. I can't see it. And it's actually very much a concern. So you might be dead, but you might not be. I don't know. I mean, I just rained a whole lot of fire on you. An unlucky penetration could have actually set off all of your ammunition. We'll have to find out once we actually get there. But it's going to be another couple of turns before we get sort of reliable, accurate sensor data there. Because as long as we're on the edge of the sensor range, then it could be a lie. Death Crusade? Sure, let's do it. I have the high ground. So this is the first anti-mech test of the rotary autocannon. The King Crack. Maximum fireage yes that was what it was designed to do of course it kicks on a radical prototype double heat sink in order to handle all of that ridiculous heat hey it's an emperor emperor would be worthy of stealing especially on this tonnage so we'll have to get in our burner mags and light him on fire uh two ballistic three energy could be any number of versions and the point defense just does not care for your bull it has all of it taken care of. 20 of 20 missiles just immediately shot down. Also got a Hornet. Don't see these very often. They are currently represented by an urban mech. And he's clearly not able to get through our point defense. If 20 missiles couldn't do it, 5 sure as heck ain't gonna do it either. Uh, what's your shot? 
Looks good to me. Shape charge that sucker. Warlord it up. Let's give him the beans. Locking on target. Oh, you missed the one, but you hit the second, and that nearly blew the entire big to pieces. Taking a hit. Good job. So one is down, another is rolling. Yeah, we'll probably try and steal the Emperor. I don't know if we managed to salvage the pieces to this Raven or not. The integrated laser AMS is what we'd be looking for, and right now, it's kind of no guarantee that we're going to get our hands on it. So I do have some worry. Standing by. Mockingbird in your Mackie. Do you have a shot? Ooh, you have an idiot on the... Yeah, you're going to kill him. You're going to give him a shape charge. You're going to warlord that shape charge, because why not? Actually, do you see that urban mech as well? You do, but this urban mech is pretty much dead. His right arm is gone. And once an urban mech's right arm is gone, he's dead. The bandit, on the other hand, is not, which is a little disappointing. I'm there. Waiting on you, Commander. An urban mech without a right arm is not really an urban mech. Got it. It's just an expensive no trash can and a very sad pilot driving a rickety bucket. Okay, urban mech coming up forward. Don't know if he's going to actually be able to do anything, given his problems. Who did we kill? Because the reinforcement lance has lost two. Oh, the Phoenix off, of course. So there is still the fire starter on fire in that group, which the more fire we apply to it, the better off it'll be. If we can identify the fire starter while he's shut down, if there's no raven or rapier next to him, then we'll know that we're trying to butcher the rapier. But we'll have to find out. Coach, you are the one who will find out because you're good at this. This is your job. I got you. All right, so yeah, we cooked that raven. Uh, do you have a direct line set? You do. That's what I like to see. And shoot his face. Pile of bail. That hit something good. Do you really want to be in that mech? Ready for orders. Ask yourself this question. Would you be happy being in that mech? Acknowledged. You're dead. Could kill you. You're dead. Could kill you. But I have a more important target. The Impera. Enjoy the heat. Oh, also, you know, we're managing to plink off the other targets nearby. Come on forward. Aye, aye. A little bit too aggressive. I probably should wait to see targets before I just rush on in there. But where's the fun in that? Aye. Didn't kill you. Was kind of hoping it would. Okay, your AMS is unjammed, which will now give us even better protection. Howl, of course, being a gunnery 9 instead of a gunnery 10, has some unfortunate side effects that we have to overcome through sheer force of will and awesomeness. Which, to be fair, normally it's using a really cool mech, although the Thanatos kind of turned us on to the idea of using artillery pretty heavily. But, uh, not sure how, how high its awesomeness co quotient What's is. Up, what if your rotaries is jammed? No! Whatever shall you do? You're gonna kill a hornet, that's what you're gonna do. Oh. This was what you were built for. This is why you exist. Okay, I need to get a little bit better heat control. At what point, though, do I just pull off one of the racks? I don't want to. I want all four. I built the darn thing to have four. You're gonna have four. Okay, he's got AC5s. So he's a primitive. At least he's not a very cool one. He doesn't have the LB10s, which is what would make him awesome. Um, honestly, I could probably kill each of you. I just have to make sure that I target you with the right weapon system. Right, so. You're dead. You're dead. Could even potentially hit you. But that might be a little bit too aggressive. Let's try it. Roger that. Okay, one. Two. <laughs> Come on, do it. Two and a half. I'll take it. <laughs> Solid connection on that one. Oh, the Emperor, baby. She is demonstrating a Location prodigious confirmed. amount of firepower, and I love what it. Can I do for you? Black Knight, run forward. In fact, run through the fire. Where is the fire? It's in that nebulous location where I'm in the fire, but not really. 
Mockingbird. Mocking You're Mackie, yes. I'm really surprised this guy hasn't bailed yet. <laughs> it just kind of seems like the right idea. And an urban mech is gone, and we never saw him. We really don't need to bother. He's an urban mech. Paradox. Uh, you wish to go towards the Emperor. The only reason we're salvaging it now is because it's the heaviest thing on the field. So plasma cannons and hydras. Hey, we actually hit with one of the plasma cannons, so that's pretty good. That'll help torches temperature up nice and high. And we're just creating like a a line walkway of fire for him. We're zipping on above the entire forest. It does not care. I'm going to have to focus a little bit of firepower into him soon. The Emperor may actually be his entire only unit. He may be an entire entire force. Because this is take the bait. There's an extremely heavy... Ma right, 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 okay. So the warrior and the fire starter is all that's left. In terms of the other forces, we'll kill those nice and easily. And we'll torch out the final target. Coach. You see the Emperor. Lovely. High. Accuracy, not exactly high. I'll switch over to the Hydras just to make Copy sure. Because that'll ensure the torch. And it disappeared. Yes, Commander. That's okay. We have this under control. Understood. Moving fast. Um. Yeah, shoot down the war. Okay, so that's dead. And then I will just blow apart the fire starter. Ready for orders. And now we'll get a definite con confirmation that yeah, it's dead. Um, thumper, direct, face, shape, charge. I wasn't actually looking to take it intact, but it is cool that you got it head. Mockingbird's Mackie. Push on forward. Inferno shell. To give him all of the love that he deserves. This will freak him out. That's the key. I hear ya. Shub him. Also to going to be denied an opportunity to do anything. Up, she has a terrifying amount of damage that she just hasn't been able to use. <laughs> oh, I kind of feel bad for her. The shot. More area of effect torching going down. The mech, of course, needs to stay on fire for as long as possible. Receiving you. King Crack, chill. I'll just stay put and keep things cool. That's exactly what you're gonna do. Because that will allow us to do so many other things. Reserve. Reserving action. Oh, this is the bottom. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize we were on phase seven. Okay, good. Finn. What's up, boss? Finn should not be the one scouting this. On the move. Full speed. Hi, I'm gonna drop these right on your face. Um yeah. I copy. Lots of heat. Standing by. Howell does actually have the ability to make this work. Move order received. She gets lucky. Let's see if uh actually no she doesn't. Never mind. Uh just brace. Because he's standing in cover, which means he's not going to get out of that thing easily. So we got to right. probably Wait, cook him out of here. So SRMs, Inferno, Inferno, Inferno. Aim for his face. How much heat do you think he... There we go. Pilots out. So without too much trouble, we were able to get him out of the mech. After, you know, we lit the entire forest in fire. And it's a good thing that we're leaving because I don't want to have to be here when, you know, there's no escape from all of that fire. Not bad. Not bad at all. You have the company working very synergistically together. King Crack has not had his moment to shine just yet, but it will eventually. Minimal damage across the board. Thanatos is going to require a little bit of patchwork. It is an Emperor 1A, which is probably the primitive version. And that is the entirety of the rapier. Oh. Show me the pirate laser AMS. I came here for the pirate laser AMS. You will give it to me. I may have gone by it. I saw it. You can't deny it. There it is. Laser AMS pirate. Okay, so we're getting that. That'll be a huge pickup. 
Uh, suspicious cargo is not something you generally want to be carrying. It's uh, generally a bad idea. XL exclamation point exclamation point. Um, minus 45% engine weight. Eight engine slots reserved, which is huge. Um, what? What is this thing? Oh, it's a quick sell XL. Oh. So. That's the thing. <laughs> Energy, Indirect Plus, Ultralight Gyro. I have two, so I'm actually good on those. Uh, so angle heat sinks, quick sell. So there's somebody was a quick sell out there. Not quite sure who. 325 ready fusion core? I need one of those. After I'm building a whole bunch of really big mechs. And you know what? Just for the giggles, I'll take the Emperor part and we will get lucky. We did not get lucky. Uh, we did manage to get the Emperor's guns, the ultralight gyro as well, and some primitive sensors because that's what everybody needs. They want the primitive technology. It's the hipster version of building a mech in MechWarrior. Well, you see, it's so much better quality if you look through the primitive cockpit systems instead of your new fancy super high definition ultra-wides. Yeah. Don't you know? It's about the art of mech driving, not the science of mech driving. And everything else that you hear all those filmmakers talk about why they want to film on old film. But anyway, I digress. Sorry if I insulted anybody in the film industry. So that'll be hopefully pretty much no time at all spent on the repairs. 12,000 for two days. So they did more damage than the last group did, but then again, the last group was four people. So two days on the Thanatos, a single day on the Catapult. That'll bring us back into the maximum action. So we'll cycle. One, two, stop. Good. Everything's done. Come over to our store because this is going to be the last chance to look everything up. Faction. Show me your ballistics. LB10 slugs, I have 10. LB10 clusters, I have 6. I need more of them, apparently. New equipment Energy, there's nothing interesting. Missiles, there's an MRM-10, but no, not what I need. AMS, no. Engine core and XL engines, which are always terrible. And a sensor tracker is in the shop. I have one, I'll keep it that way. Go over to our mech bay. Bombard, poor little bombard. So King Crack has demonstrated his capability on two unsuspecting targets who had no chance whatsoever, uh, and a building, which also had no chance whatsoever, if we're completely honest with ourselves. It still needs to have an additional gunnery support. Um, it is very toasty, and also very light on ammo. Just doesn't, probably doesn't have nearly as much ammunition as it kind of needs, but as you can see, I'm kind of out of space. Uh, I don't know where else I could find ammo to cram into it, but it desperately needs three more times. Double tons. Oh, that's a problem. I don't have any more room for this. I mean, I suppose, and I hate to say this, but maybe a double XL engine? That might be what I need? But, I mean, would that make up for, well, it would allow me to take out the Pharaoh. Take up two more slots. Double, double. That would get me up to two more double tons, which gets me closer to where I think I need to be. But this this mech is incredibly light on ammo. I would normally run two rack fives on this much ammo. We'll see. We'll definitely have to see. I think it'll work. I think. I want it to work because it's just hilarious. Uh, the other thing that would be amazing is if we could find three more clan ones because that would give me another ton for or another space for another double ton. And that would be great. I'd have another double ton and a single ton, which would help out a little bit as well. So, I suppose a clan double XL engine, but oh, putting that in a hundred tonner seems like such blasphemy. But in any event, folks, so that's going to do it for today's episode. I have been Tarek. If you like what you're seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to receive a notification every single time I release one of these videos, press that little bell icon, leave a comment, and I will see you all in the next episode.